How's it going everybody? Today we're going to be checking out the new Avanix Viper. Someone in the comments section of the AR6 pistol video said that the Viper is going to set the new standard for PCP pistols. So this is a semi-automatic, but they say it has almost no recoil. Apparently it's really, really fun to shoot. Now all the Vipers that you're going to see this first week or this first month are prototypes. After SHOT Show, they're going to go back and add more power to this gun. But this will at least give us a little taste of what the Viper's all about. This is fully contained. It was actually designed for self-defense. Of course, in the USA, we use firearms for that. But there's a lot of places where you can't get firearms, and so... Advanix is a worldwide company. So the new semi-automatic Viper pistol is going to come in 177, 22, and 25 caliber. Today we're checking out the 22. It says it's very quiet and smooth with almost no kick, making it a lot of fun to shoot. They're available for pre-order now. Just shoot on over to New England Airgun. They were nice enough to send this Avanix Viper out so we could check it out. So to get yourself a Viper, just shoot on over to NewEnglandAirgun.com. Send them an email or give them a call. And as soon as the first shipment hits the USA, you'll get one sent straight to your front door. Here's some hardcore stats. This weighs 2.3 pounds. The recommended pellets in the 22 caliber are the 18.13 grain but they say they do well with the heavier ones. The 25 caliber is gonna shoot the 25.39 grain, 25 cals, and you probably definitely want some heavy ammo for the 177. It's got a 250 bar fill, and you can shoot it all the way down to 120 bar. As I said, they're gonna be adding more power after SHOT Show. This pistol has a total length of 14 inches. So this is gonna be a smooth semi-auto with plenty of power. You got a 1 8 quick disconnect foster fitting built right into the gun, so no fill pro required. That's awesome. I love the ace of spades on the back right there. Awesome touch. This actually holds more air than you would think because in addition to the air tube right here, the shroud acts as an air tube, just like the FX Panthera. As you can see, it's got some beautiful wood grips right here. So in this video, we're going to blow some stuff up, see what pellets it's like, give me some chronograph testing and all that jazz. So right away, I could tell the fit and finish on this was just superb. To cock the gun, you just pull the slide back, and then you gotta push it back forward. And now it's cocked. If you pull the trigger, it'll just start going off. To decock the gun, you're going to take it off safe, pull the slide back, pull the trigger, and let the slide down gently, and now you're decocked. The Viper has a barrel length of 165 millimeters, which transfers to 6.5 inches. There's going to be double magazines available for this gun. So, in 177 caliber, a single magazine would hold 8 rounds, 22 caliber, 7 rounds, and 25 caliber would hold 6 rounds. And of course, the double magazine in 177, you're going to have 16 rounds. 14 rounds in 22 caliber, and it'll hold 12 rounds in 25 caliber. So double magazines are coming for this gun. And if you don't know what a double Avanix magazine looks like, it looks like this. Basically, one magazine fused together, and then you just slide it over for double the capacity. Before I shot the Viper, I did go ahead and clean it with Ballastol, which is safe for air gun seals, and a JL Crown Saver. You always want to get the preservative gunk out of that barrel because if you leave it in there, it can actually damage it. So everything pretty much came out on the first patch. I think that was my second patch, but I just pulled a couple more to get dry. Now it's time to fill this bad boy with my little foot. To fill the tank, you just attach the end of your air hose to the 1 8 quick disconnect built into the Viper. And it has a max pressure of 3625 PSI or 250 bar. And you'll notice that's right where the green zone ends. You'd probably want to refill this gun when you got to about 130 bar. But it will shoot three magazines while it's still in the green zone. As I said before, this is a prototype. On the production version, they're going to add open sights as well as more power. What would be perfect for the Viper, though, would be a very small reflex sight. I do have one, but I'm not trying to take it off the gun that it's on. So I actually ended up using the Sig Sauer Romeo 5. 
and this is sort of a high-end red dot sight. You can adjust the red dot to be a very, very fine point. But before I blow your mind with the accuracy of this gun, here's some general pellet speeds. And once again, this is a prototype. They're going to be adding more power after SHOT Show. For chronograph speeds, we had the 13.43 grain traveling at 667 feet per second. The medium weight pellets, which would be the 15.89 grain, were traveling at 612 feet per second for 13.22 foot-pounds. Now the two pellets recommended by Avanix for this gun are the 18.13 grain JSBs and the 25.39 grain JSBs. And they both shot lights out, which you're going to see in a second here. 18.13 grain, 605 feet per second, almost 15 foot-pounds of energy. And the 25.39 grain, that's almost 16 foot-pounds. And once again, the 18.13 grains and the 25.39 grains were both shooting dime-sized groups at 10 yards. Right here, I'm rocking the Sig Sauer Romeo 5 red dot sight. We're shooting the 18.13 grains, set up at a very special 10 yards away. The red dot that I was using was actually so fine and teeny that it wouldn't show up on the camera. But when I turned the brightness up, it's kind of what it looked like, although a lot smaller. I'm actually moving the camera around right here to show you that when you move your eye, the dot stays in the same place, which is awesome. So I took a couple shots to sight my red dot in. I basically clicked over to where I thought I was supposed to be. And right here I'm shooting my first group with the 18 grains. That was seriously just the first group I shot. Oh my gosh. I was not expecting that. Five shots in like half a dime. One shot sight in, a red dot sight. 10 yards, what? That's some accuracy right there, buddy. There's actually seven shots in my magazine. So like an idiot, I had to shoot one more at this group. But even though it went a teeny bit high, we still got seven shots under a dime and that was on my first try then i just made a few random clicks right a few random clicks up and here's the next group i shot with the 18 grain jsps Then I said, let's make this official. Boom. Five under a dime. Not bad at all. Those are the 18.1 grain JSBs. shot this gun all the way out to 28 yards so I'm going to show you a bunch of that in a little bit here here's what my scope looks like 28 yards away the Viper was able to hit cans no problem at 28 yards and by that I mean there's no way you're gonna miss a can at 28 yards we got a lot more shooting in this video including accuracy testing with the 25.39 grains and some precision shooting that resulted in some major carnage all right, you guys, that's uh, 28 yards away, and I think I got it dialed in there so you guys can see what it's like to shoot a can. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Sixteen foot pounds is a lot of power. Took that cup out with no problem and it knocks these cans for a loop.
when you hit a can with 15, 16 foot pounds, it's no joke. Oh my gosh. Entrance wound, exactly in the middle of the can. Exit wound. Looking good. So before we blast the heck out of a bunch of unlucky targets, I wanted to test the 25.39 grain for accuracy. I simply sight it in. And boom, my first group, five under a dime. Oh my gosh. Crazy stuff right there, my friends. This just in, boys and girls. They emailed me some pictures of the double magazines. And I really love this new magazine design. So easy to load. So here's how that works. Basically have the cutout portion facing up. Drop a pellet straight in there. Push it in. Rotate to the next one. Push in another pellet until your magazine's full. And then you're going to see a little bit of a notch that sticks out of the front of the magazine. It's actually the opposite of a notch, but I'm not sure what it's called. And that corresponds with a cutout that's in the receiver. So you just match those two up and you can slide the magazine in from either side. When it gets to the middle, the detent right there, it's going to pop right into place. Another cool thing about the magazine is you don't have to decock anything to pull the magazine out. In fact, you can only pull the magazine out when the gun is cocked. So from day to day operation, this gun's just going to stay ready to fire until you decock it. So you can shoot all day just using your fire and safety. And then at the end of the day, you just decock it and store it with the gun decock. That's pretty gross, huh, Bugaboo? Hell yeah! So for the grand finale I set up at a very special, 28 yards away, we'll call it 35. Still shooting the 18.13 grain JSBs. And once again, I was surprised at how easy it was to hit what I was shooting at. Really an amazing gun. But as I said before, it's not going to miss a can at 28 yards. No way. It was raining and about 12 mile an hour winds, but I still had no problem hitting those cans right in the middle at 28 yards. Holy crap, that's crazy. chance you know what that one's trying to hide right there but we're just gonna leave them on the ground and I'm gonna nail them so I'm gonna a teeny bit low <laughs> holy crap jack that dude up all right as far as noise level it's definitely loud I'd say 4 out of 5 on the loudness scale. Is the Viper going to be the new standard by which all PCP pistols are measured? I would say so. Super impressed with this gun. I can't wait to see the production version. This prototype is definitely badass. Alright everybody, thanks for tuning in. Until next week, happy shooting. We'll see you on the next one.